Okay. So the last time, just little refresher. Yes, we we was here and uh, just were talking about several things. First, then about the mixing. Yes, then you have two frequencies mixing. When you mix them together, you get kind of sum and difference between two frequencies, and that's and that's why if you have close two frequencies, you will get very low frequency oscillation as a difference. And usually this difference, yes, if you have this, for example, you have, this is a double sideband signal with two, this carrier plus, plus this information signal minus, and if you multiply, you are getting this, this term at this, lower frequency range and this is this term is not neat this is double frequency and this is carrier frequency terms and this is what we are what we are these two ones are are important yes this is two double terms are not necessary they are filtered out, yes, this is this double frequency terms. And this is low frequency term, which is used for the demodulation. So normally you have this situation, you have antenna, local oscillator, which is mixing with signal from the antenna. And if you have this low pass filter, then we are receiving approximately the same frequency as this local oscillator generates, yes? For example, if you have oscillator on one megahertz, then you are receiving one megahertz. This is because mixing of those two gives you zero frequency. And, that's, and, and you are filtered around zero, that's why you are getting this citation. But the problems, here arises when you have different phase of incoming signals. If you have here 90 degree shift between the local oscillator and the received wave, then you run into the problem of not receiving the signal. That's why you have this, this fading sometime when you're, when you are moving, for example, you can observe that approximately in distance of of uh, wavelengths that, for example, if you have like, normally this is like a fourth of the wavelengths. For example, if you have like one megahertz, one megahertz is like 300 meter wave. That means that approximately in 75 meters, you will have a problem with the reception. Each 75 meters, you have 90 degree shift between two signals. And uh, if you have 100 megahertz, that means that the wavelength is just three meters, yes? And in case of three meters, that means that each 75 centimeters, you will have problem, yes? So that means that you have point here when you have bad reception and after 75 centimeters towards Transmitter, you have another bad point, but in between you have good situation. And uh, like this is so-called co coherence interval. And uh, if you have this simple mixing scheme, you cannot do anything with this. This is unavoidable problem. You can just try, you can try, try to move antenna a little bit and then you will get off this minimum and receive this signal. Okay, I will take my iPad maybe to have this illustration. And this is indeed, maybe if you, you have some radios, you can maybe even observe this. But smaller, uh, higher is the frequency, the smaller is the distance, yes? But for example, on three gigahertz, the wavelength is already 30 centimeters. That means at seven, that means at each 7.5 centimeters, you have this, this dead spot, yes? And for example, in Wi-Fi, you have something like 10 centimeter distance between 
dead spots. That means if you move your laptop by, let's say, few centimeters, you can get much more better reception. Yes? Because it's like maybe it's not very relevant to the, the topic of the, all this mixing, but maybe it also good to know. Maybe I will show you because it's it is mobile communications topic, which is told told in another call course. There is my sharing button. Let's. Like, if you have, let's imagine that this is like a Wi Fi router. This is Wi-Fi router. And this is, let's say, your laptop. Usually laptop has Wi-Fi antenna like a small wire coming here somewhere around the screen. Yes, and they, here you have a Wi-Fi card. So that means that and, and the frequency is, let's see, this is like 2.44 gigahertz. Yes, this is. So, so that means that it oscillates 2.4 billion times per second. Yes, and if it moves with the light speed, yes, if, if the speed is like three, I think it's like this. 10 raised to eight. No, this is like, like another. This is 300,000 kilometers. This is three, hmm, this is in eight, I think, yes? Yes. Meter per second. So it means that if you oscillate and move in the same time, it produces you a wave, yes, with certain lengths. And the wavelength in this case is like division of two those things, like, like this is a uh, 2.4 divided by So this, no, it's it's opposite, like this. It's C by F, right? Seems like this, because if you have yeah. higher frequency, you have a shorter wave. Okay, this is, and it produces like, 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 24, it's four, it's like 12 centimeters, something like this. Yes, because it could be 2.5 would be 12, yes, but 2.4 is a little bit more. So that means like, um, okay, the battery, battery of my pencil is, Okay, we have to lay, wait for some seconds while it charges. Then I will finish drawing, then I will go to the slides. Okay, let's move. Okay, it started. Okay, this is like 12 centimeters, yes? So that means that that 
that your wave is like twelve centimeters. So that means your antenna must be like at least six centimeters, usually half wave or or like sometimes you need a fourth wave also antenna. But for Wi-Fi, yes, at least six centimeters antenna. And uh, What is here is that if if you now imagine that you're you're you are transmitting here here is your transmitter antenna and now your receiver antenna is moving yes if your receiver antenna is here yes this is exactly one period you will receive signal in in the same phase because it's whole period between between two antennas. But if your antenna is somewhere here or here, yes, that will mean that if your local oscillator is generating sinus, And here you are getting cosinus because you will start receiving from here. Yes, because it, this time will pass during the propagation of the signal. And if you mix sinus with cosinus in the mixer, you will get zero outcome because they are shifted because this is 90 degree shift between two signals. And if you, if you multiply sinus and cosinus with the same frequency. Now this is local oscillator in the receiver. You will receive nothing. And that's what we are checking today in the laboratory work. We will indeed check this and you will see that there is zero outcome in this situation. And that means that approximately at each three centimeters, yeah, this is three centimeters, and here is more or less good reception. Yeah, because here it's exactly opposite face. Just here is a six centimeter span when you have good reception. But closer you come to those points. Okay, that means the next point is here, bad point. Yes, that means that between all these bad points, we have six centimeters because next bad point actually is here. So each six centimeters, you have this 90 degree shift and it will cause you a problems. And if you do not change the face of the local oscillator, you will not receive signal unless you move a little bit closer or farther from the antenna. How to solve this? This is the next idea. And that's why in reality, nobody uses this simple mixing instead of this we come with different scheme with two mixers in the transmitter and this is not that important because in the transmitter this is a different purpose why we have two mixers but in the receiver we have two mixers to avoid this 90 degree shift problem because in the receiver, you are sending cosinus to one mixer and minus sinus to another mixer. Minus sinus is necessary because if you send plus sinus, you get flipped spectrum. Here, 
this is quite complicated problem. I will not talk about this, but you need a minus sinus here. And if you have two mixers, you will never get this bad situation because either what I, even if you have zero here, you will have maximum here, or you have zero here, maximum here. But in most of the time, both of the mixers will produce something in between, yes? And when, if you have other here at the output, okay, there is no such schematics here. But reality, you have to add those two signals. And that's how you will recover your, your a, for example, amplitude modulated signal. Also, in Wi-Fi module, which modulation is using COAM or symbol mixing? In Wi-Fi, of course, we are using this uh, COAM, yes. And in Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. in reality, here is little bit, little bit more uh, sophisticated because here is also some kind of advanced modulation inside. I'm, I just little bit show you because Wi-Fi, this is because Wi-Fi is very broad I, because it has, there is a lot of standards. Yes, for example, this is 8002, 11, and there is a letter, yes. And for example, A and also G, and now it's like, I don't know also, but this is three popular. They are using so-called OFDM, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing here. And B uses CDMA. This is a little bit different okay. standard, but B is not never used. This is very, very ancient standard, like one megabit per second. Mostly now it's N. Yes, nowadays most of routers have N. This is MIMO with a lot of... And modern routers have also this AD and AC standard as well. This, this is super high speed Wi-Fi, like one gigabit and more, yes. What is AD? It's OFDM also? Yes, it's OFDM, but this is multi multi channel already. So it is like multiple input, multiple output. No, multiple input. This is N, yes. Yeah. But but in AD you can aggregate because in N you have like okay, Wi-Fi band consists of twenty megahertz channels. Yes, like each channel is twenty megahertz. So in N, you can grab two channels. Mm -hmm. This is so-called uh, I just, just my head is already too old to remember this, but like like uh, there's something dealing with H, but uh, okay, but in AC you can take even more if you can, if you wish. Yes, you can take all channels, for example, and that's how you boot speed. Because here you get maximums forty megahertz, and that's what something like three hundred megabit per second. This is maximum for N for A A. I do not remember AC or AD, it can get, get up to one gig. And, uh, and one of them is using higher frequency, like 60 gigahertz. But this is, I never have seen such routers in the shop. I, and, I have seen only five gigahertz up to. Sorry? I have seen up to only five gigahertz. No, but this, no, but this five gigahertz, this is not, it's just, yes, it's broader channels, but this is not 60. And it, yes, maybe it, on the five gigahertz, you have this one gigabit, but one of them is already on 60 gigahertz and it is like 
enormous highly frequencies, but I never have seen. But but the the idea here is that you have this OFDM, all of them has OFDM standard, and OFDM, it is like you are transmitting several carriers in the same time. So it is like you have data, it gets, you have two data streams, it get mixed by cosinus and sinus. Yes, this is like, this is a quadrature modulation classical, but then it goes to multi-carrier modulator here. This is OFDM. And of, only after that, it goes to the antenna, yes? This is quite advanced operation. It, it allows you to avoid some problems with the multi-pass propagation. And in the receiver end, you have the same. You have OFDM at the beginning of the MD modulator, and then you have this in-phase and quadrature components, and then you have this classical down mixings, and you have, you see there is a two data streams. This is this, is this scheme which was shown in this slide, yes, like you see there is G2 signals, which could modulate. And we also are going to do this on our, on our lab work. We will send two musical signals in the same frequency and we'll observe that we can transmit two independent stations on the same frequency, just because one is cosinus, another is minus sinus. And if you have, perfectly 90 degree shift, they, those two signals are not disturbing each other and you can transmit both of them using one carrier frequency and using the bandwidth which is necessary only for one of them, yes? Just similar like in amplitude modulation, but now you have double packed your your spectrum and the of course when you are receiving now you should have exactly the same cosinus and sinus phase in the receiver to in order to recover both two signals now uh, in contrast to this scheme with one signal where you can add them and then you will extract useful signal. Now you cannot add because each of those branches are carrying different signals. And in this case, you should introduce some schemes to make sure that you have exact phase synchronization between the transmitter and receiver. And in this case, usually transmitter sends some test signal. For example, in Wi-Fi, before the transmission, it tests some, some, some so-called pilot signal. This pilot signal is received by receiver and then it's, it measures the, the shift, the phase shift between the transmitter and receiver and adjust the local oscillator so that it's perfectly matched this received signal. If, if your station is mobile, for example, you are moving, you have to do this from time to time because your movements will cause this uh, phase shift to change. And that's why you have to send these test signals from time to time. This is called equalization when you have some special pilot signals and that's why that's why this scheme with two generators is is not used in uh, analog communications because for example in broadcasting because in broadcasting you are not going to transmit any test signals you are just going to transmit some music that's why 
they will never use such scheme. They will use standard scheme with one, yes, with one carrier and useful signal. Signal spectrum in this case is symmetric and the, in the receiver, you can use this to avoid this 90 degree shift problem and cheap receiver of course will not have even this. That means that you can sometimes have bad luck and you have to move antenna a little bit. And this normally in all times you have to go around and maybe not move in the room to get the reception. I have remember some Mr. Bean show when it was holding some antenna <laughs> and uh, not moving. But in data communications, because you have very, very, you need maximum speed of the transmission. For example, this schematics for is used in 2G mobile, yes? In 2G mobile, we are using pure quadrature modulation. Also in the cable, digital cable TV, also we have this, this scheme. And for example, already in this, in this uh, terrestrial wireless digital TV, you already, we are using OFDMs. This is similar to Wi-Fi more. But in the simple cable schemes, in these the simple cable decoders, they are using simple QAM. And uh, they are transmitting two streams and then we need some test signals. From time to time, they are transmitting, instead of the payload, they are transmitting test signals. They are specially marked so that receiver can distinguish that this is not useful data, but this is test signal for the adjustment of the phase. And then it works. For data communication, this is perfectly valid scheme with two streams at the input and two streams at the output. That's how you double the, the transfer speed without expanding the occupied frequency spectrum. In, for example, 4G, yes, in the 4G mobile, which is, I think, nowadays, it's the most, it's broadly used already. It is even more complicated schemes for the ensuring that everything works fine. For example, in, in 4G, the mobile station transmits test signal, your mobile phone transmits test signal, the base station receives this test signal and measures not only the phase shift, but it measures the propagation time between two antennas and, and adjusts. And then it says to the transmitter to adjust the phase. Instead of adjusting local oscillator in the receiver, it sends signal to the transmitter and asks him to change the phase. Why? This is because if you have many mobile phones transmitting towards one base station and you have common mixers for, for, for all those mobile phones and they all are in different distances to mobile, to, to the tower, there is no way to adjust the phase. That's why it asks the transmitter to change the phase so that all signals from all mobile phones come to the antenna coherently at the same phase. But this is very, very advanced schemes. And that's why this LTE, this 4G is very, very, have very big synchronization overhead. Yes, and that's why, for example, if you wish to have some simple sensor node, which consumes as less energy as possible, 4G is not recommended because it will consume 90% of energy on all these synchronization procedures, yes? And that's why it's better to use 4G 
well, 2G, or maybe it's better, there is some LTEM and NB-IoT, which is a little bit different standards, which remove some all this synchronization, strict synchronization requirements at the cost of much lower transfer speeds, yes. But if you need very high speed, you need all this stuff. And in 5G, it becomes even more elaborated and more complex and, uh, but you get higher speed. Okay, maybe some words about this QAM demodulation. In, in QAM demodulation, the signal, the situation is similar. When you can, if you mix with cosinus, you get G1. And if you mix with the sinus, you will get G2, yes? It depending what you are multiplying with, because another one will be zero. And some words, and finally, some words about the complex, because all this stuff, you see, there is no any complex math here. This is just all, the, all signals are real and everything is real. And that's how physically it happens. But now we can do use, we can use complex mathematics to simplify all this processing to hide this mixing in both branches within complex numbers. This is truly mathematical fiction. I would like to stress that in reality, you cannot build physical system for this. But if you do all processing in some kind of the computer or simulink, it could do this mathematically and mathematically this is perfectly valid. So what the people could do, they could, instead of this two branches here, this G1 and G2, yes, there it was. Yes, you see G1 and G2. We can make some complex signal G, which is real part has G1 and imaginary part is G2. So this is kind of complex function, which have two parts. Real part is one signal, this in phase some component subcode, and this is quadrature component G2. And of course, you cannot transmit such signal into the antenna because this is a complex function and it is not, it is not physically possible to implement. That's why before the transmission, you take real part of this signal multiplied by this carrier signal, which is also not cosinus, but this is complex exponent. We are going to do this in the lab work. Look to this scheme, yes, compare this. Yes, this is classical one with two mixers and sinus and cosinus and this complex modulator, yes. You just have one oscillator but it is generating not cosinus and not sinus, but it's generating complex exponents. This is also truly mathematical fiction because you cannot physically generate complex exponents because complex exponent, in fact, this is sinus plus cosinus inside. But mathematically, you can do this. And if you have two signals, you just put Another one signal as the real part, another signal as the imaginary part, add them together, send to the mixer, and then before transmission takes the real part. And then at the output of this real, there is a real signal which could be sent to the antenna. That's why, for example, in Simulink, you could do all this stuff. And then later you will get real transmission. And in the receiver, you can do the same trick. Instead of mixing with two, yes, you see two, two, you mix with one, yes? 
with complex exponent and put low pass filter, which also has complex steps inside because this is, it, it filters both channels simultaneously, yes? And, and here you have Z from T where you can just, real part is one, this Z1 and imaginary part is Z2. And uh, there is also comparison, yes? Two generator scheme. This is completely real. You see, there is no any complex math. And here, this is this imaginary. And of course, if you use this transmitter with this receiver, it will also work, yes? Or this transmitter with this receiver, because in fact, the things happening here are exactly the same as happening here. This is just mathematically shorter description of this process. And if you do this in the software, and if your software supports complex numbers, for example, if you are doing this in Python or MATLAB, you can do this branch. If you do processing in, in C, for example, C programming language naturally doesn't have complex number support. And you have to on you have to use some libraries that could be, or you have some microcontroller. Maybe better to go with this scheme. But if you have Python or MATLAB, which have native support of the complex mathematics, no need to, to complicate things. You just go with a complex exponent and, and complex filter and taking the real part. And here also some illustrations that this is your complex baseband signal transmitted in the receiver. In the transmitter, you move it to the carrier frequency. And you see before the taking real part, it is not symmetric. Yes, the spectrum is once non-symmetric. So in the negative frequency range, you have nothing. But after the taking the real part, it produces this negative frequency component it becomes symmetric. And if the spectrum is symmetric, signal is real. This is a property of signals. And in the receiver, this is farther you go in the, re in the receiver, you get down conversion. That means you move this to the left and this right component gets around the zero the left gap goes to the double carrier frequency and it is so-called image channel. It is unwanted. It will be filtered out. After the filtering out, you leave only with this. And that means you recover your transmitted signal. And it is a little bit smaller after all this processing because all this mixing stages introduces decrease of the amplitude. But it have a, a, the same spectrum and it, you could recover the signal. And we will do this in the laboratory work. We will use this sinus cosinus scheme, listen to the music, look what happens if you change the phase. And then finally, we will do with this complex exponent. Yes, and that's how we are getting all this stuff working. So what happens if you have the phase offset? Yes, if, if you have quadrature modulation if we, and we have phase offset. If you have phase offset, then you have, you are receiving mix of both signals. You see this is, this first received signal will be, depending on this phase offset, this theta, you will have mix. If theta is zero, everything is fine because sinus from zero is zero. That means this G2 gets removed. 
and here students from theta is zero and here survives D2. So it means that Z, Z2 will be equal to G2, just 0 0.5 and Z1 will be equal to G1. But if the theta is not zero, you are getting different situations. And for example, if theta is 90 degrees, you will have exchange of the signals, yes? Z, Z2 will receive G1 because sinus from 90 degrees will be one, whereas cosinus will be zero. That means Z2 will be equal to minus G1 and Z1 will be equal to G2 because cosinus from 90 degrees is zero. They will exchange. And if, if other faces are here, you will, you will receive both. They will be mixed together. And for analog transmission, it will be not possible to recover. For data communications, you will not receive your data. And you will have to send some test signals to figure out this data and compensate this either in the receiver by shifting the face of the local oscillator or in the transmitter by shifting the face of the carrier generator. Yes, this is two options, in fact. But, but the second option requires some kind of loop back channel between the transmitter and receiver. And, and this loop back channel also could, must be good enough that, that the transmitter could understand what receiver is asking yes and all these modern communication standards have this loop back channel that each receiver have some loop back to the transmitter and it talks back continuously yes and if you have if you break this loop back channel 4g stops working yes and because you need communication in both directions all the time and here also graphical illustration what is happening that that this is if you have this g1 and g2 this is this blue is original situation yes that means you can represent your transmitting signal as a superposition of two signals g1 and g2 and this blue is superposition like sum of the two vectors and if you have phase shift by theta, you are getting this red one. And here you are getting this two Z1 and two Z2. Yes, this is, this is two here because of this 0 0.5 multiplier. And to maintain this scale in the picture, we have this, this double. Z1 and Z2, and they are, you see, they are completely different. And unless theta is zero, you have completely different Z1 and Z2. And when you minimize it, yes, when you, when you minimize, how it was working, okay, we need, we need to, like this. If, if you minimize it, if you, if you try to, to minimize this theta, your signal becomes closer and closer to original. In the data communications, in the even small phase shift will lead to, to big problems, but it depends from the constellation. Yes, we will talk about maybe, maybe after, after a couple of months when we will study the digital communications. So it depends on number of the points in the constellation. If the constellation is small, like BPSK or QPSK, you can, this kind of phase shift will not be critical and you still be understandable that you, you are in this quadrant. But if you have higher constellation, higher constellation require higher phase synchronization and also will allow higher transfer speed.
Okay, and uh, if we have a frequency shift, this is even worse. Yes, if you have phase shift, this is kind of solvable problem. But if you have frequency shift, if those two generators are generating little bit different frequencies here and here, this is much severe issue because in this case, this phase is continually changing because one of the vectors is rotating faster than another and this phase shift between two is continuously changing all the time, yes? And you cannot estimate this phase shift until you fix problem with the frequency shift. And in reality, you, you, you have to have some algorithm in the receiver to figure out this frequency shift and compensate it very precisely. And for this also, transmitter transmits some test signals, receives uses as test signals to estimate frequency shift and make corrections to this frequency shift. And this correction usually is done by multiplying by some cosinus or complex exponent at very front of the receiver. It's very similar to, to regular mixer here, but this, this shifter goes in the front because here you have real mixer with the real local oscillator here. We can use some box. Uh, no, 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 no. It's a nice feature, but. Uh, here we have this, this. This is our, this oscillator, this is a carrier, this is demodulator here, but this in the very front of, this is the frequency offset correction circuitry. You see the frequency which is generated, this is F delta, which is frequency difference between transmitter and the receiver. And of course this F delta somehow should be estimated. And this estimation algorithms, this is a very, very complex topic in reality because it means that receiver received some noisy pilot signal from the transmitter and it processes this pilot signal, tries to figure out because this pilot signal also will have some frequency shift. Yes, and we need to use some very specific pilot signals which are not sensitive or not, not sensitive, but allows you efficiently detect these frequency shifts very precisely. And after that, usually there is a two stage correction. First stage usually goes to the analog part of the receiver and it, it asks tuner to adjust, adjust frequency. But because this analog tuner itself is not very stable, you need in the digital part second frequency shift or frequency offset correction circuitry, which removes this frequency shift to zero. Because in data communications, if you have even one Hertz, imagine if your Wi-Fi is connect, connect is transmitting and 2.5 gigahertz. And even if you have one Hertz difference, your data will not be received. So that means you have you have stability like like at least like parts of the million yes to get this working, and this of course is continuously updated all the time because because all these generators in the transmitter is also. It's not perfect. It, it has temperature dependency and it will drift a little bit around. 
And in the receivers, this, this, this also have a drifting. So you need continuously track the frequency difference between the receiver and transmitter to get perfectly frequency synchronized reception. And after this, you can go and compensate the phase, yes? But unless you have not fixed this frequency shift, phase corrections are not, doesn't give you any advantage. And of course, if the frequency shift is very slow, you can adjust the phase continuously and it will serve as a frequency offset correction circuitry. But this is, I think, quite complicated topic, but it was to mention that it's, it's possible and we will observe this in, in the one laboratory works when we are, will be doing these PLLs that we can also, if the frequency shift is very slow, then you can continuously rewind the phase and that's how compensates this frequency shift. And here also some illustration about the, you see, if you have this shift, your spectrum is shifted a little bit left and you have to move it. Yes, you see, you see here that you little bit move it to the right to have right position. This is insanely complicated things. Yes, we, you, we, we will are doing this in, the, in this course, but in real communication systems, in the modems, into these chips, for example, Qualcomm chip or, or another who is producing these baseband chips. This is one of the major tasks. This is a frequency and phase offset compensation continuously compensation and tracking because if you lose synchronization in frequency and phase, your modem will stop receiving the information. In the analog communication, this is not that important because small frequency shifts or, or, or phase, shift, phase shifts are not important at all in the analog, but frequency shifts will cause at the, if it is a, Analog IM, it is not critical if it is kind of double sideband modulation. Then it will cause shift of this audio spectrum. We will observe this also in, I think, sixth laboratory work. That if you have frequency shift, you will listen, your voices become like chimpunks or, or monster voices because it will have some. Uh, shift of the this uh, pitch of the voice and uh, another but this is not critical because if you have for example some speech for example you have some mobile or if you have some i don't know telephone calls because in uh, in earlier times this uh, Telephony used these standards and we could observe all this kind of stuff in analog. But nowadays, of course, all this telephony is digital and we are using common digital standards. And those analog modulations are now mostly only in some simple applications like, I don't know, some cheap, I don't know, FM broadcasting, yes, and uh, some others. The, the, the mostly everything is digital and you need all these complex baseband chips and you cannot simply do it with as in old times. Okay, so we are perfectly in time. This is just references because all those slides are borrowed from the book. If you wish to understand it better, take this book and read, yes? Those people have described all these problems and also have given a bunch of the examples and also some models when you can play around and look how it works. But we will also play in our laboratory work with all these 
frequency and phase shift problems 